So welcome to our third lecture in the historical linguistics series. We are looking today at something that is closely related to the vowels we have been looking at last week, namely morphological change, particularly in strong verbs where it's associated with the up loud, the change in vowel between different forms of the verb. But it's a system that also um, extends across the different word classes. Before we look at verbs specifically in Hugo van Trimberg, I couldn't resist giving you a short extract from um, another text of the 13th century, slightly earlier than Hugo van Trimberg, who is around 1300. Reinbot von Dorne is a huge fan of Wolfram von Eschenbach. So he tries to write a story about a saint in the mold of Wolfram's um, life or, or story about Wilhelm, and he picks as his saint, Saint George. But it's not so much the George we know, so there is no dragon coming up. Instead, it's a series of nearly philosophical arguments with which uh, Georg tries to persuade different people that Christianity is the only uh, proper religion. And as arguments for convincing people like King Dacian or the Queen of Alexandria, he uses uh, the miracles we see around us in the natural world as proof that there is a creator God who has ordered the whole universe in his image. And part of this ordered universe isn't just uh, the sky and the uh, stars and um, cosmography, but it's also uh, the language and that all the language is ordered in a miraculous way. So I'll just read you the passage. It's from a new edition from 2020. So you have the modern German translation on the right hand side. Um, Jedoch schüttet es mit seiner Kraft der Himmelkönig als einen Schaft. So that's the universe that God is rattling in storms. Da er zeigt er seine Stärke an und dass er kann, das nehmen kann. Steine, Würze und de Krut unterscheidet der Engeltrut. Als, genauso, tut er Döne und de Wort. We had looked at the word Döne, that's what Hugo von Trimberg uses ironically at the beginning to describe his tinnitus going on in his head, but also the different forms of song he is uh, practicing. And Wort is here the pl strong plural of Wort. Later it splits up Wort in the plural Worte and Wörter. But here in Middle High German, it's just the single Wort that is used for both singular and plural. So he distinguishes, so he kind of classifies Döne und Wort in the same way in which he classifies stones and uh, herbs and all the natural world. So he, God is presented like a, um, Jakob Grimm who uh, makes a classification system for all sounds that are produced. And he orders them on a scale from low to high. And if you remember the triangle we had been seeing for vowels, where R is um, uh, 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 in the middle, uh, but at the bottom, and O, uh, and e, uh, o is at the back, um, E is at the front, R is uh, um, he orders it in a different system. So for him, the lowest one is the first, uh, the most behind sound, the O, while um, the sound that brings the R forward to the E is uh, the highest sound. So he orders it, um, Töne und Wort, von hell uns an des Himmels Ort. Die Tiefen schrieend all, Oh weh, die Höchsten singen Ave, 
Maria Süße Gimme. So uh, the devils are associated with the dark vowels and um, the angels are associated with the high vowels. And you remember our discussion of Ave as a, a turnaround of Eva, so turning the sin of pride and the fall into uh, the moment of salvation. So they, the angels sing con continuously like Gabriel did when he greeted Mary, Ave Maria. And then you have lots of high vowels, süße Gimme, uh, Gimme like gem in, in English or Gemme is uh, a precious stone. Um, but on um, earth, while we are here, it's all mixed. So um, we have all the vowels and it's up to us what we make of it because so is der Erde Stimme auch verwandeliche hier. So we can change our voice. We can both say OV and we can say Ave. Uh, and it's, it's up to us how we use our voice rather to the praise of God and Mary than to uh, uh, sound like the devils. But to continue where we left the story of der Renner, uh, you remember ich, um, Hugo von Trimberg had sent the narrator to go on the meadow where the narrator saw the pear tree with the different pears falling in the different positions and then reflecting on why we had to leave paradise. And um, he attributes this to the um, fall that Adam and Eve uh, did. And now he continues what happens after um, they left and links it with these images of the thorn um, bush that we had seen as symbolizing pride into which some of the pairs are falling. Du Adam und Eva beide von der wunderlichen Heide des Paradieses mussten Schäde, da lebten sie mit Leide. Um, you might remember the word play he had with the word late, L-E-I-T, which uh, was um, Adam's sin has verleitet us, has led us into sin, and uh, Christ's cross takes the light, the light uh, away from us. In a similar way, he plays here with a um, four rhyme uh, that the Heide rhymes with a Lede, um, which we had seen as um, the source of sorrow. Um, and um, verfluchet was du Erde, da ihr lieb nah sollte werde, da wurchsen hagen und de Dorn, das kam von Gottes Zorn. So where they should have found their lieb nah, die Nahrung für den Leib and for ihr Leben, because leap uh, develops both the meaning of body, life, and the uh, meaning of life, which is etymologically related in English. So where they should have um, found their uh, feeding for their, uh, their livelihood, well, that's how you could uh, translate Liebner, there they only uh, found Hagen, Hagen is um, a whole thicket of thorns. Um, the Hagebutte is um, the rose hip and uh, in Dorn, the thorn bush. And this was came because of God's wrath. I've marked in red uh, the verbs that are strong. Uh, in blue um, that are weak, and in green the preterite presence that develop between uh, 
after the strong verbs have um, finished being productive verb class and before the formation of uh, the weak verbs, and they are used as modal verbs in uh, Middle High German and in modern German indeed. So, uh, müssen, sollen, sollen, können, dürfen. And um, the different classes of verbs allow you to do a kind of linguistic archaeology because all uh, strong verbs are Indo-European in their origin. So um, for each uh, German strong verb, there should exist an equivalent, etymological equivalent in Sanskrit, but also in Greek and Latin, and certainly in all the other Germanic languages, which are the branch. For the, uh, uh, the same applies still to the preterite present, uh, verbs, which um, stopped being productive before the Germanic branch uh, veered off. And uh, with the weak verbs, the Germanic languages uh, share the early formations of weak verbs. So, um, Leben, in this case, you still, uh, you have the equivalent to live in English, but since weak verbs are still the productive class, every uh, language forms its own um, weak verbs and it keeps on forming weak verbs. So you can make up a um, weak verb of, uh, for example, from um, any anglicism that you import. So from the English to download, you can make the German verb downloaden, um, and that will then have the weak characteristic. Ich downloadete, ich habe gedownloaded. So um, while I couldn't say um, ich downloade, ich downloadete, uh, loaded, uh, yeah, uh, I, I can't even uh, properly uh, try to apply an, uh, an upload to uh, downloaden. Um, so I've given you for the four strong verbs that occur in this passage, um, medieval English um, equivalents. No, um, not all of the strong verbs have survived into modern English. And actually, English has undergone a stronger um, transformation um, of strong originally strong verbs into weak verbs under the influence of the incoming French. And because there um, was more of an opportunity to switch over to a more modern verb and to let the old Indo-European strong verb uh, drop. So obviously common is still uh, absolutely a normal in English, um, uh, it, I come, I came, um, I have come, and um, that sh still shows the same sequence of vowels as in uh, German. Um, ich come, wir kamen, um, und ich bin kommen. Um, in verbs that have a perfective meaning, in Middle High German, you don't have the GE prefix. So, um, I yesterday discussed with the first years uh, the Gregorius passage where the key uh, is found in the fish, and there it says, Ich han funden. So, without the GE, because Finden already implies it's a past action. Uh, the action has been perfected, so it doesn't need the past indicator, uh, the present um, perfect indicator of 
uh, GE. Um, while putting together the examples for this lecture, I came across a fascinating uh, text, the medieval English text, which um, I read with great fun, Have a Look, the Dane. Have a look at it. It's a, a dashing adventure story uh, playing in, in, in Denmark. And um, so uh, from one of these examples uh, for common uh, from Havelock is, he came to the well water up the rope. So he came to the well, um, but the pronunciation in medieval English would still be like in medieval uh, German A for the A sound. Um, so warte, come, and uh, to uh, to draw um, water from the well. He came there. Um, from Havelock is also an an example for another strong verb that has become rarer in uh, modern English. Uh, to wax um, and have a look uh, the hero who is superhumanly uh, tall is it's a bit uh, like in Wilhelm actually um, the uh, kitchen boy who ha has this superhuman giant strength so have says about himself ich am well waxen I am uh, a well grown. Um, in modern English, uh, you really only any longer uses in wax and wane as an opposite um, to um, to dwindle uh, the increase of, for example, the moon that is waxing and waning. But in um, medieval English, uh, it could uh, be used for the whole full range in which also Middle High German uh, Wachsen is um, used. Uh, it still comes occasionally up uh, in this old meaning in Shakespeare, where um, in Henry the Sixth it uh, reads, What art thou like the other Hoxen death? So uh, are you like uh, a serpent, uh, a grown deaf like a serpent? Um, snakes were reported to have no ears. So um, his uh, other character is accused of being snake-like deaf. And then um, other um, verbs have completely gone out of use in English but they would have been there since they are strong verbs, such as shaden, to take leave, to part. Um, so to part would be the French equivalent imported into English and having um, pushed aside then the old Indo-European uh, form of um, uh, shaden. Uh, so in Middle English, it would be the infinitive shaden, then the past ten, uh, tense shader and the participle shared. Um, so in one of the religious poems, it says, the sun to shed the die father nicht. So the sun is uh, making a parting between Scheiden of a day from uh, the night. By the way, all the examples I'm giving you here, I've uh, lifted off the Oxford English Dictionary, which is an amazing resource for also for German. So you can uh, search the OED in the advanced search for any German word, which uh, since they normally give the German cognates in any English word. And that's a very interesting exercise. So if you will, if you want to look whether there are any cognates for uh, German words you are unsure of, 
in English, uh, the OED is a marvelous resource. The image I've given you here for Adam and Eve uh, comes from one of my uh, favorite uh, late medieval uh, books, uh, the Nuremberg Chronicle. I have a slightly downsized facsimile uh, here, which is uh, was published by the Taschen Verlag, uh, which uh, gives you the gorgeous woodcuts that were done by Michael Wohlgemuth, the uh, teacher of Albrecht uh, Dürer, and they're really fine. Uh, by the way, before I forget, um, the Dürer exhibition uh, in the National Gallery in London is on until the end of the month, so uh, it's really, really worthwhile uh, seeing as an introduction to uh, German culture, both medieval and early modern. He is a marvelous uh, draftsman and woodcut artist, uh, so do book uh, soon if you have an opportunity to go to London before the end of uh, February. And um, I, I liked uh, the fact uh, Adam is um, dressed in a uh, real hair shirt, which he didn't have time to fashion. So you have still have the head of the hunted animal hanging uh, uh, between his legs. It must have been quite uncomfortable to wear it um, like that. And you see um, Eve um, uh, feeding um, Abel or Cain, one uh, of the two of the two firstborn uh, boys. And uh, this is to illustrate uh, the uh, curse of after having um, for the fall that uh, Adam needs to uh, im Schweiße seines Angesichts uh, to um, das Land bebauen and Eve has to bear the children uh, with pain. And we had looked at the sounds that the children make when they are born. Frau Eva zween Sünne gewann. Der eine ward ein Ackermann, der was geheißen Kain. Abel, hier ist der Bruder Sin. Sorry, I should have pronounced it as Kain because it rhymes with Sin. Der was ein Hirte bis an den Tag, dass er sie der Tod gelack von seinem Bruder, der ihn slurk. Um, you see uh, that Hugo von Trimberg, in his retelling of uh, the book of Genesis, uses mainly strong verbs because it's all very basic activities that he's reporting. We'll see in a later passage when he talks about grammar, he uses many more weak verbs because he needs technical vocab. But this is all really um, primeval um, vocabulary, and hence um, you have um, a prevalence of strong verbs. An interesting um, case is heißen, heißen um, in Middle High German, one of the um, class seven verbs, are the former reduplicating verbs that have ear in the past tense. It's another uh, one of uh, the verbs that have more or less um, fallen out of use in English. So you had a Middle English uh, verb, kicht, um, and uh, the past tense, height, uh, or past participle height. Um, so, in the life of St. Cuthbert, it says, a bishop kicht Eugenius. Uh, so, he was called uh, Eugenius. And um, 
in uh, German, um, you still use the verb heißen in the form ich heiße so and so, which is always uh, difficult to translate into English because you have not one verb in English. Uh, you have to use it via uh, either as a nominal phrase, my name is, or you start uh, like Moby Dick starts, uh, call me Ishmael. So um, it's a construction where the person themselves are in the accusative. While um, here it can be used with a nominative, so Abel hears, um, uh, der Bruder sehen, sein Bruder hieß Abel. And um, the origin for this nominative is actually that it's a vocative. But the form of the vocative, the form of address of somebody, um, uh, then falls together with a nominative in Middle High German. Um, but uh, it's uh, gone out of use. Uh, you wouldn't say, Ich bin geheißen, kein or Henrike. Uh, ich, uh, or um, der war geheißen, or der uh, ist geheißen, um, kein, you would say, der ist genannt. Kind. And nennen uh, is uh, then a weak verb that came in later as a, um, uh, a Jan verb derived from name. So nam Jan turns into nennen. And it's one, uh, one of these weak verbs that have an umlaut in the present tense and no umlaut in the past tense. Uh, when we have uh, the word uh, ligen, uh, which is class four, ligen, lack, gelegen, um, and that had an equivalent in English. So there, uh, the infinitive also was ligge in Middle English. So um, in Havelock, uh, the hero complains, he haveth me do ofte in sorve and pine ligge. He makes me oft lie in sorrow and pain. And the ligger was then contracted in uh, early modern English to lie. Uh, it's a similar process that's also happening in, in German, that you can have these contractions um, gelegget or gelate um, in, in Middle High German. So uh, it's a process that is fluid in Middle English and Middle High German, so you can have both forms. And in Modern German, it goes only for the long form, and in Modern English, it only goes for the contracted form. But if you look at the medieval origins, you see their relationship. Um, so I've given you um, a bit of uh, the uh, account in uh, uh, Genesis, partly to uh, explain why me uh, names are so important and imbued uh, with meaning, because the Hebrew names are always taken to have a significance. So the uh, uh, word kain sounds like uh, the word for men, so Eve says, I've gotten a man from the Lord. Um, 
And so the two brothers grow up differently and um, God favors the sacrifice of Abel um, over the sacrifice of Cain. Um, and that results in Cain getting angry and uh, slaying his brother. And then it says the blood of Abel cried out from the earth. Um, oh, I, and I forgot to, to mention the, the last verb on this page. Um, slahen, um, again, the, so sh schlagen in modern German, slahen, slurk, die slagen. Um, and there again, English goes for the contracted form that would have existed in Middle High German next to the full form. So Middle High German, you can have either slachen or slan. And in modern German, you can only have schlagen. And uh, in Middle English, um, you have slay, slog, slain. And that is um, it, in the past tense, it still has the long form Everilk fought of him, they slaughtered. So um, every little bit of him, they slew. Um, and you have a, a long ending there still. And then Hugo von Trimberg uh, finishes this uh, strand of the narration, saying, damit sie der Rede genug. Abel hat den Lieb verloren, e denne sin Vater wer geboren. So uh, let's stop now this uh, talking, die Rede. Abel lost his uh, life, life and body, leap again, both meanings, before his father was born. That's a slightly puzzling um, declaration. So certainly his father, Adam, must have been um, alive to give birth to Abel, as, uh, as indeed he was. But the joke that um, uh, Hugo von Trimberg is referring to is uh, one of the Latin jokes um, made in, um, uh, to keep monks amused during uh, lunchtime and uh, doing festivities where they would put up riddles. It's a little bit uh, like uh, Gollum putting up. So who died without ever being born? And the answer is Adam, because Adam wasn't born. He was created by God. And you see on the right hand side, again from the Schädelsche Weltchronik, um, how God creates Adam from Earth. Terra is um, uh, the, or, or clay. Uh, so he isn't born and hence um, Abel dies before his father was born and actually everything happens before Adam is born because Adam is never born. So it might be considered a bit of a weak joke, but um, we'll forgive uh, that. Um, so, um, and uh, the other jokes in the series of the Yoka Monachiorum, the jokes of the monks, um, right, so the first one, qui est mortus et non est natus, who is dead, uh, who died and was never born, Adam. So quis dead it et non accepit, who gave something that she didn't receive herself, accept herself. And that's Eve, uh, who was uh, here giving milk to her children while she herself never uh, received the milk because she was created from Adam's rib 
and uh, hadn't a mother to uh, give her milk. And the last and crudest uh, joke is, qui aviam suam deviolavit virginem? Who uh, violated his virgin grandmother? So the concept of a virgin grandmother is even more puzzling than a, a virgin mother, which we know is in medieval concept, at least to Mary. So the virgin grandmother of um, Abel is who? Anybody uh, welcome to type it in the chat? Um, the virgin grandmother is the earth who was innocent um, in paradise. So since Adam is created from earth, um, earth is the grandmother of Abel, and uh, she hasn't uh, been violated, uh, slept with men, or um, had be, uh, been blood, uh, experienced bloodshed until Cain slew Abel, and thus the blood of Cain cried out from the earth, as it says in, um, the, yeah, in the King James Bible. Um, the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So it's as if earth has got a mouth suddenly through being um, violated uh, with a blood. Um, another uh, lost verb in English is the verb for uh, for, uh, for losing, because to lose is actually the weak verb derived from the strong verb, but the original strong verb has got lost. And the forms would have been to lease, and then past tense lure and um, long in the uh, past participle, um, and for long, still exists, um, but uh, the other forms have gone lost. So, uh, and in Chaucer, uh, a quotation I quite liked in the legend of good women, the prologue stays, if that olde book is wherein aware, ilorin where of remembrance the care. So, if old books were not there, then the key to remembering would be lost. Verloren ist das Schlüsselin. You might remember from Du bist mein, ich bin dein, das soll du gewiss sein. Du bist beschlossen in meinem Herzen. Verloren ist das Schlüsselin. Du musst auch immer da inne sein. So one of the earliest uh, songs discussed in Minnesang. Um, and uh, again, while reading, rereading Reinbot von Dornes Georg, uh, he also uses these um, brain teasers or monastic jokes to make a point of the miracles that uh, God can uh, do, can wirken. And uh, God did this uh, to show the world his power. Du ertet durch der Welde heil. Vier Wunder huben sich hier an. Es gebar ein Maggot einen Mann. That's the first case, which we have seen the virgin grandmother. So earth uh, um, gave birth to Adam. Um, da gebar der Mann hin wieder sie. So now a uh, man is giving birth to a woman. That's Adam giving birth to Eve uh, by to, um, giving up part of his body for her. Um, da sult ihr Wunder brüfen bi. Er trug sie ane Murte. Uh, 
Tragen in the sense of uh, to bear a child, so he bore her without a mother. Ey, süßer Fürste Gurta, wie erdächte du dir ihr des hier Wunders an Ergier? So it's part of a prayer that George is addressing to God, where he marvels himself about all the wonders that God has uh, done. Um, so there are two further ways of giving uh, birth. Um, der Gebürte noch zwei sind, so the regular one, ein Wieb von einem Manne, ein Kind, Gebirt von Nature, das wird ihr viel suche, um, so that's again the curse of Eve, und tuert dem Manne nicht dabei, es wie halt das Kind ihr beider sie. And then finally, the virgin birth of Christ, ein Maget auch ein Kind gebar, das wonnet in der Engelschar und kommt vom Himmel gefahren, und ward derselben Maget Barn, die es geschaffen hat, davor. And here the marvelous, miraculous thing is that the son of the virgin is also her father. Since Christ is in his Godhead, one with God the Father, the creator, he has created Mary as he has created every human being. So uh, this is the most miraculous birth cycle of Mary giving birth to Christ, who uh, has already um, created her in beforehand. Sieht gewann Frau we Eva Kinde Phil, von denen ich nun nicht sagen will. So since um, uh, Eva gave birth to many more children, um, um, doch sieht des von mir gewiss. Ein Buch, das heißt Genesis, da findet man geschrieben an, zwer lesen und verstehen kann von der Welde Anegänge. So he points uh, his uh, students to reading uh, the book of Genesis. And the interesting thing is, I'd said in beforehand, the red, the strong verbs, are those that are shared across Indo-European languages. So it might be puzzling that fairly refined words of culture, like lesen, which we associate nowadays with reading, are among uh, the uh, Indo-European strong verbs. And the case is that they take on new loan meanings. So the word is old, but the meaning is more modern and only develops in the Middle Ages. So lesson originally means to pick up uh, wheat in order. Um, uh, and you still have that in the uh, German expression, Ehrenlesen, so to um, uh, pick up uh, things. Um, and that, so you can really see the origin of le uh, reading is to uh, pick out single letters, really to what would we call a uh, spell uh, nowadays. Similarly, uh, the word um, uh, schreiben also um, is um, a later expansion of a word that only meant to fix something legally and that could um, be in an oral contract and then is only once the law is transferred to the page becoming a technical term for writing. Uh, in um, English, um, the word of, yeah, and then in a monastic context, the meaning of scribere is transferred as a loan meaning again to, to schreiben. Um, in English, the word to write, um, wrote, written, Again, it's a strong verb, 
again with a loan meaning um, because uh, to write just meant to um, carve something and that could be just a um, notch in a staff or uh, and then it's used for writing runes while in German the word uh, Ritzen has only retained its literal meaning. Du rede wer mir zu länge und auch du Wort zu strenge, dass ich so sollte bringe von Latin zu Düte, der Söhn Kloster Lüte pflegen und an der Pfaffen, die Gott dazu geschaffen hat, dass sie gut Bilde geben, uns lehen an Lehre und auch an Leben. So, um, the uh, Rede has already been quite long, um, uh, we're uh, five minutes before the end of the lecture. So um, I'll discuss this uh, next week when we'll continue uh, with uh, verbs um, and uh, stop uh, the recording now here.